Good morning and welcome to Silver Birch on the 19th of July. We're delighted that you can join us this week and we hope that you can continue to do so over the summer as we continue our online series on a Sunday morning from the Gospel of John. Now this morning we're delighted to have Sammy Gibson back with us and Sammy is going to be teaching us from the Gospel of John chapter 14. That's when the Lord Jesus talks to his disciples about how that he has to leave them uh, and go away to heaven. And Sammy will also be talking to us about the peace that only the Lord Jesus can give. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, we come into your holy presence this morning and we give thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in heaven right now interceding for us. We rejoice too, knowing that we can have a peace in our hearts that passes understanding. We come and worship before the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that one day every knee in the universe shall bow before him in either worship or judgment. As believers, we will be in heaven giving our worship to our Saviour. As we listen to your word being brought to us by Sam, May we open our hearts and minds to be receptive to your word and that it might impact how we live each day. In the name of your Son and our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The writer to the Hebrews in chapter 4 tells us about where Jesus went after his resurrection and ascension. This passage should give us both peace and hope. If you have a Bible, open it with me and we're going to read together Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16. It tells us about Jesus, our great high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a great high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, and, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. The passage that we've just read points out two things that we need when we're under pressure. What we need to do is to persevere in our faith and we need to worship. Last time when I spoke to you, I reminded us of the chorus at the end. I have decided to follow Jesus. When times are tough, keep going. We should look up and change our gaze from ourselves and fear to Jesus Christ. We should hold on to our faith and we should draw near in worship. This morning, listen carefully as Sam brings his teaching to you and enjoy a lovely piece of worship recorded by the Summer Madness Youth Camp. And the tagline in it is so appropriate. Despite the circumstances, we can worship him. i 
Today's reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. Well, good morning everyone. I trust that you are enjoying God's blessings each day, and uh, also His grace, experiencing His grace and strength uh, to face the challenges that... Um, life has to throw up at us. Um, today we're going to look at, uh, we're going to continue to look at the conversation that the Lord Jesus Christ was having in the upper room um, at the Passover meal with his disciples. Uh, you remember last time that he had declared and uh, revealed that uh, Judas was going to betray him and then Peter was going to deny him. But he had told them that he was going to leave, that he was leaving them, he was about to depart from this world. And so they were a bit anxious about that. Peter wanted to go with them and they were wondering what, what was going on. This wasn't the way it was supposed to be in the disciples' minds and hearts. So in chapter 14 of John, we, we come in this morning into the conversation where Jesus is reassuring the disciples and he says this to them, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and I think he's saying here, trust in God when you don't see him, and trust also in me. 
uh, when I am gone. I think that's the idea behind it. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you uh, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I'm going. And at that moment, Thomas speaks up and he says, Lord, how can we know the way? We have no idea where you're going. And Jesus uh, answers uh, with that famous uh, quotation and that famous answer that we, we are all familiar with. Jesus says to Thomas, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had already known me, you would know who my Father is. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And then Philip says, Lord, uh, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus, again, um, shows slight frustration when he says to, to Philip, you know, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father and in, is in me? So... You have this conversation where the disciples are, are their hearts are troubled the lord can read hearts and minds and and that's what uh, really he wants to win that's what he wants to uh, connect with our hearts and our minds he wants us to be genuine he wants us to be honest with ourselves and honest with god um, and he says to the disciples look uh, let not your hearts be troubled because their plans their plans weren't working out and I don't know about you, but for me, these last few months have been quite a challenge when it comes to all the plans that I have made or had made for this year. I had to uh, cancel seven flights. Um, I got vouchers for those and no doubt, uh, hopefully, but it, I have no doubt the vouchers will not have the same value as uh, the flights that I'm going to have to book. And uh, other people have had to, you know, change their plans. Uh, we... we we had a, a death in our family where an uncle died and no one could really go to the funeral. We, we had a little grandchild on Easter Sunday, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing her uh, sometime soon. Um, she lives in Liverpool. And uh, I'm sure you have all, ha all had plans. You know, schools have been cancelled until September and it's been a challenge having children at home every day trying uh, to get them to stay online to learn their lessons. and. Lots of plans have been changed. Uh, uh, the world has been turned upside down by this uh, COVID-19 virus and many people ha 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 have been troubled and challenged and had to change their plans. And the disciples were beginning to realise that their plans for Jesus, he was going to come, he was going to you know, take over, he was going to set up his kingdom, he was going to defeat the Romans or deliver the Jewish nation from the Romans, all the things that they had seen in Old Testament prophecy. Um, Judas was a political activist and he was trying to force the issue, which is probably why he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, trying to force Jesus uh, to take the initiative, to take, uh, take the leadership by, by force. But as we saw um, last time, Jesus' way is not by force. It's by service, uh, it's by love, and it's by forgiveness and compassion. It's a very different style of leadership. And so he says to the disciples, look, don't let your hearts be troubled. Your plans are not working out. Um, you're not in a position, you don't have the power or the authority to f make sure they work out. Because everything is not in your control. But I have a plan. And one of the things I find fascinating about uh, this conversation is that Jesus is really saying, look, I have a plan. Don't worry about it. Let not your heart be troubled. Um, there is more than enough room in my father's house. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would not tell you this. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again myself. 
I will come back so that you will always be with me. And I think what the Lord Jesus Christ is, is again, he's, he's doing is he's opening their eyes to a bigger vision, to a bigger picture. He's reminding them that God has a plan and his plan is still on track. It hasn't changed. Nobody can take knock it off target because he has all power and all authority and he isn't the one who's in control. And Jesus says that, you know, be ready. You know, my plan is still on track and I'm going to my father's house. If I have to leave you, there's a reason for it. A reason that you don't totally grasp right now. But be at peace because you are part of God's plan. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And there is a place for you. Uh, you see in these first couple of verses, several promises that, you know, first of all, you, you, you see that the Lord Jesus Christ says there's room in heaven for every one of you. There's plenty of room in heaven. If, if God made the universe and all the galaxies and the many galaxies that we still haven't, you know, discovered, he is more than capable of making space for you in his heaven. So Jesus here, he said, first of all, there is a Father's house, there is a heaven, and there's a place for you, and there's a place for me. If you believe, you will see that he qualifies that by saying, you know, trust in God and trust in me also. Because ultimately, um, our relationship with God, in fact, any relationship, if you think about it, is based on trust. And so God wants to have a genuine love relationship with us, but it has to be based on trust. It doesn't work any other way. Even in our lives with the people that we know best and, and we love the best, it's got to be based on trust. And so Jesus says, you trust God? Well, trust me also. And if you trust me in my Father's house, there's room for you. And he goes on to say, and I'm going to make sure personally, I'm going to my Father's house to prepare a place for you. Uh, sometimes I watch these programs called Grand Design. I don't know if you, you watch them and you see these super um, homes that people build, you know, uh, with fantastic views and, uh, you know, kind of dream homes, dream villas and, and dream locations. And, uh, and it can fill you with envy uh, if you're not careful, uh, but certainly with admiration at how these people can be so creative uh, to design such a place. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ has gone to prepare a place for you in the Father's house. It's going to be mind-blowing. Uh, it's hard to even imagine what kind of place that's going to be, but there is a place. There is such a place. It's like when the Lord teaches the disciples to pray. He says, I want you to pray this way. And, and basically he's saying to them, prayer is worthwhile. My father wants you to pray and he wants you to pray my father. And here you see again the Lord Jesus is talking about the father because Christianity is not a religion, a religion. It's a relationship. It's relational. It's all about trust. It's all about communication. It's all about a relationship. And the Lord Jesus Christ is appealing to the disciples to see it that way. It's not just about doctrine and theology and, 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 and all these kind of things. At the heart of it, it's about trust. Do you believe? Do you trust? I have a plan. And God has that great plan of salvation that you, you read about right from the beginning of the Bible, right from Genesis. Uh, you, you, you see God beginning to bring in his plan. And the Lord Jesus Christ came when it was the right time. And he's about to go to Calvary at the right time. And he's going to be lifted up on a cross with his arms open wide to all of humanity to say, trust in me. Believe in God, believe in me also. And so God is sticking to that plan and, and, and Jesus will not be knocked off. And, and we as Christians, we can trust him for that. He has the whole world in his hands and he is on track and he is on the move. The second thing he says is, um, uh, I will come again. You know, he says, when, when everything is ready, in verse 3 says, I will come and get you. I will come by myself and get you. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ ascended up into heaven after he died on the cross and rose again, 
it says he ascended up into heaven and the angel said, this same Jesus that you have seen ascend up into heaven shall come back again. The same Jesus. Uh, we have that wonderful promise uh, from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ here where he says, I will come again personally and I will get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Heaven exists. The Lord Jesus Christ is convinced of it and, and he has said he came from heaven and he's gone back to heaven and he's coming back again. And as Christians and, and indeed all of humanity should be preparing themselves for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order to prepare ourselves it, it's helpful to realise that we have to prepare our hearts. We have to uh, condition our soul into that preparedness waiting for the Lord's return. You know, when you're expecting someone special to come and visit you, uh, you get organised. Uh, we have some special visitors coming at the end of this week and we're excited about it and we're getting organised because we haven't seen them for months. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is encouraging us to open our eyes, lift our eyes and realise that what we see today and what we see in our world today is not the whole picture. He's coming back again and he wants us to get ready. In Luke chapter 12, uh, we read about how you get ready for the Lord's return. And, and the Lord talks about, in Luke chapter 12, uh, he talks about um, how that you have to be delivered from the fear of man in preparation for his return. Don't be afraid of what people think. When we talk about the Lord's return, some people think this is ridiculous. It's 2,000 years has gone by and we, you know, he's still not here and don't be so, you know, it's a myth and all kinds of things and, and, and doubt uh, is sown and, and, and doubts creep in and, and, and you begin to think, you know, it was just all spoof. Uh, but in John, in Luke chapter 12, the Lord encourages us not to be worried about what men think. To be delivered from the fear of, of men and what they think. Even in the Lord's day, they thought that what a lot of what the Lord Jesus Christ said wasn't true. For various reasons. Uh, they, they were jealous of his power uh, and his leadership uh, skills and qualities. But we need to be delivered from the fear of man. We, we need to not be worried about what others think. It's about what Jesus says and what he thinks that really matters when it comes to Christianity. And the second thing is we need to be delivered from greed. Uh, we have this story in Luke chapter 12 of a man who built barns and, and he was a successful businessman and so he built bigger barns and, uh, and he kept building bigger barns. He didn't know what to do with all his, his wealth and his success but he had no time for God and he wasn't rich in his relationship towards God and it caught him out. It caught him out and the Lord said, you fool, this night your soul will be required of you and you weren't ready. And the Lord goes on to say uh, another way of being ready uh, is to enjoy the grace of God. Uh, it's the Father's intention, he says in Luke 12, that he will give you the kingdom. Whenever you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you get the kingdom. You get sins forgiven, you get eternal life, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. You get the very presence of God with you each day. You get the wisdom of God uh, through his Holy Spirit. You get the courage and the power. All the things uh, that, that God promises uh, in his grace. Strength for today and grace for tomorrow. And so the Lord Jesus Christ again says to us, um, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And there's a wonderful verse, you know, at the end of uh, the book of Philippians. I, I believe that the Apostle Paul, he picks this idea uh, up and he says, don't be worrying about anything. Uh, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Jesus Christ. So how can you avoid this heart being troubled? Well, trust God. Trust him. Uh, even though you can't see him. And trust in the words and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And you will find this peace that passes all understanding. He will deliver you from the fear of man. He will deliver you from greed or covetousness. He will help you see that uh, relationships are much more important than wealth. And he will uh, pour in uh, the oil of gladness, the grace of God each day uh, into your life. Now, as the conversation with Don, Jesus almost, uh, uh, you know, as an extra to what he was saying, said to the disciples, now you know the way and you know where I'm going. And Thomas, he says, Lord, how, how can we know the, we don't know what the way, what do you mean the way? And Jesus has to say, look, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, there's many people today and they've lost themselves. They've got lost. They're like Cain, they're wandering purposelessness. They don't seem to have any purpose to their life and someone comes along with a cause and they join that cause and then they join another cause and you know all kind of, they drift along and they have no purpose uh, to their life at all and many people end up taking their own lives because they they, they, they lose this whole uh, sense of living you know what's the purpose for it all for whatever reason Jesus Christ can give you a new purpose a new direction a new meaning when he says I am the way I am the way. I am the truth. There's a big crisis today of truth. People don't know who to trust anymore, where the truth lies. Is it in the media? Is it in the papers? Is it in politicians? And, uh, you, we hear so much fake news now um, through social media and all kinds of things. There's a war of truth going on at the moment. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the way. I am the truth. You can count on me. I just don't talk the talk. I walk the walk. We've seen that. Uh, when we looked at the story of Lazarus where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he proved it. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he doesn't just walk the walk. He talks the talk. Uh, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. He is the life giver. And he promises eternal life to those who believe in him. Even if they die, they will live. And to, today he's promin promising us a place in heaven and he's going personally to prepare that place and he's coming back personally for those um, who have that place in heaven we're all invited every one of us if we don't end up in that place that he's prepared in heaven for us it is not his fault he's done everything he can do by giving his life and going to heaven to prepare a place for us um, eventually he, he you know he says in, in verse uh, 7 he says you know if you really know me you'll know my father you'll know who my father is from now on you know and have seen him you've seen God I am the way to God but you've already you, you've actually already seen God he's saying and and uh, Philip the other disciple says Lord show us the father we, what are you talking about Jesus said look if you're looking at me you're looking at the father all the works that I have done Everything that I've said has only been from the Father. It's exactly what the Father would say and what the Father would do. Jesus Christ came to earth to reveal to the world what, who God really is and what God is really like. And he's a God of love and he's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of healing. He's a God of grace. He's a God of promises. And he's a God that has prepared a place for you and for me. In heaven let not your heart be troubled trust in God and trust also in me Give up. 
Thank you, Sam, for your message this morning for us from John chapter 14. And we look forward to hearing from you again next week. Laura Story, who wrote the songs Blessings that we've just heard, has had a pretty hard life herself. But it has given her the credibility to write that the trials of this life can encourage us to walk closer to God. Let me remind you again of the reading in Hebrews chapter 4. You have a Saviour who died for you and who is alive. He cares and understands. And the double negative in the passage, we do not have a high priest who cannot understand, challenges the preconception that anyone might have that God is distant from each of us. Because we know from the Gospel of John that God sent his only begotten Son to die for us. He felt all the feelings that you do, yet without sin. You have a Saviour who understands everything that you will face this week. So we should listen to the words of James when he says, draw close to God and he will draw close 
to you. As we close our service, we will give thanks for the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and pray, giving thanks for the bread and wine. Our Father, it is such a privilege that we can come into your holy presence in reverence and humility through the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift our hearts in worship to your Son, who died for our sins, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and now intercedes for us. And we can know the peace that the world can never give and is only found in him. We give thanks now for the bread and wine in obedience to his command in the scriptures that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the Lord's death till he come. The bread reminding us of his perfect life and body broken for us. The wine a reminder of his blood shed when he died on the cross for us. Thank you Lord for sending your son the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we enter a new week, may we each of us know your presence and peace with us in every moment of every day. Amen. Let me encourage you to take a few minutes this week to read Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16. It will be such an encouragement to you because whatever challenge you face, you will find help. Focus your thoughts on the Lord Jesus Christ. As it tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, you can have peace when you cast all your cares upon him, knowing that he cares for you. Now there's one last thing to tell you about this morning, but it's really important. Next Sunday evening is going to be a very special evening, and we're going to have an online Zoom commissioning service for Peter and Debbie Turtle because they will be going as you know as missionaries to Moldova on the 3rd of September. Please make sure that you join us for that special service at, and at the service we will also have an offering for Debbie and Peter to help them with their significant start-up costs as they move to a new life and a new country to serve the Lord. So that's next Sunday night at 6.30. May God bless you and keep you throughout this week. Goodbye.